كذلك يتم نعمته عليكم لعلكم تسلمون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عيد مبارك everyone تقبل الله منا منكم يا الله أكسبت فما سمكم يي and forgive us and forgive you and the even though you have the topic there, God has this straight path. I don't know if you still remember, I had to cover the last bit of where we left off last time when we were talking about uh, we, um, you alone we seek help from. So inshallah, I'm going to go over that even though I'm going to bypass the... I'll get to that topic inshallah. I'll see how much I can cover. Um, so we, the last thing we stopped at last time was uh, when we said that the Sahaba, Ridwanullah Ali, may Allah be pleased with them all, that you to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything, small or big, uh, to the point that one of them will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to provide for him the milk or the salt for his dough. And this is a high level of reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, the asking of help from him alone. And uh, this means that the believer sh should not differentiate between what is small and what is big from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, all blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't matter how small it is, uh, it's not easy for you to get, had it, need, had it, had it need, uh, been for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made it easy. And uh, it's not for no reason that there is a dua, Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla wa anta taj'alu al-hazna idha shi'ta sahla. The meaning, say, oh Allah, there is nothing easy except what you made easy. And you make difficulty, if you will, easy. So it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes the easy easy. And it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes the difficult difficult. So the atiqad, which is the, the conviction or the creed that you should have, uh, that uh, the, the creed that some people have, that the easy thing or the small thing, you should not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. This is a form of shirk, a hidden shirk that the person does not realize. Because if you realize that I don't need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I can manage things myself, that's a problem in the aqidah of the person, in the creed of the person. But the person should believe that whatever you have, and we mentioned last time, that even if the person is affluent and he's got the ability and the capability and the help and the means, he should not settle for anything except by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make the easy difficult for you. Inshallah, we're going to give an example later on soon uh, to elaborate on this point. So um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the small and for the big. And if the person thinks that, no, I leave, I don't want to make dua, I'll wait till something big happens and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the talbis, the deception of the shaitan. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. Doesn't matter how small and doesn't matter how big. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all times and all circumstances. And the more you uh, stress your point and the more you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the more uh, the, 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 the keen you are and, and the more cavities means keen to have whatever you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Inna Allah yuhibbu al-abd al-milhah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the servant. That is milhah, means the person who insists in his invocation, on his dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worshipped in terms of al-mas'ala, means asking him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, but human beings, they have a vision that is contradictory to the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because as human beings, we look with a short-sighted 
uh, we have a short sight, uh, sh short sightedness in, in terms of our visions in how we see things. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reality is completely different to ours. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ لَوْ أَنْتُمْ تَمْلِكُونَ خَزَائِنَ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّ إِذَا لَأَمْسَكْتُمْ خَشْيَةَ الْإِنْفَاقِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, had it been you that own or who own the treasures of my Lord, verily you would have held, means you would not have spent for fear of spending, because that's the human being, is is miser, he's covetous to hold, he wants to hold, he doesn't want to spend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes the ayah by saying, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ قَتُورًا Verily mankind is very miserly. So this, this is the reality of mankind, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should not worry to ask him all the time. And the more you ask, the, 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 the more beloved it is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the dua is the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua is the ibadah. So we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with dua. Um, and the dua is uh, the essence of all the, um, the rituals, uh, rituals we do in Islam. I mean, if you take all the ibadahs, all the forms of ibadah we do, all the forms of worship we do, and we look forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from salat and siyam and hajj and zakat and all the other deeds, I mean, the essence and the depth of these deeds is for what? Is to get a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the whole essence of all the, the, the worship we do and we put forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ibadah and uh, is, is, is the reward. And asking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you need to require to invoke him and you need to require what it's, it's required of you to rely on him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this isti'ana, when you say, وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ This seeking help uh, is, when, uh, is understanding that, uh, that we have a reference, uh, something to go back to that is strong. And, and what we need to understand is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that we need to go back to in all of our affairs. And when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's one of his names, Al-Qawi, the strong, that with every musiba, with every calamity, and with every test, with every tribulation, you need to understand that in front of you, there is a Lord. And above you, there is a God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. and your problem, regardless to how big it is in your imagination, in your experience, it is nothing in comparison to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the resurrection, the creation of this universe, and how big the universe, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But from what we know through science and astronomy, the universe is huge. It's unbelievable, it's beyond our scope in terms of thinking. But that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing. And the resurrection after the destruction of this world for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is easy. So when you think that you, how big your problem is, doesn't matter how big your problem is, in comparison to the strength and to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's nothing. And the human being, for example, if somebody is a VIP or he works for a VIP, just like take any affluent person, just the chauffeur of that person, he thinks that he has a backup, that the person he chauffeurs is somebody that can open the doors for him, that can put words for him, that can get him to reach certain things that cannot be reached by somebody else. That chauffeur is a servant of that VIP person. But the believer, the Muslim, should know that he is a servant and a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who owns the breath that 
the VIP man takes in and out. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his throne running the affair of this universe. And this is something that is uh, very important for the aqeedah of the believer. The Muslim, he has to have a sound creed. And the Fatiha is a big ni'mah, a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on the believers when they recite Surah Al-Fatiha because that's a ubudiyah. And the ubudiyah is the servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manifests in isti'ana, is asking him subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. If you're not going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, who are you going to ask? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who owns everything. And by doing so, you taste the sweetness of Iman. So if you're, uh, you're, you're, your need is, is wealth, Allah is the rich. And if your need is uh, healing, Allah is the Shafi. One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is known in the Quran based in the Hadith. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the dua say, Allahumma shfi anta shafi la shifa illa shifa. Shafi is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if your um, affair or need is fear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al qawi the strength, the strong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector. So all these understanding uh, uh, is necessary for the Muslim to uh, purify his creed and his reliance and sti'ana and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way for you. So what happens to a lot of people and uh, by experience, they come to you with their problems, they complain, I've got this issue, I've got this problem, I've got this thing. And they, they, they narrate to you and they relate to you their issues and you say, I've tried this and this and that, and you are another person they come to. And they, then you ask the person, did you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then the person like, it's like, it's, it's like something new. No, that's the first thing. That's the first thing you should do. You don't go to people and you ask people to help you. Uh, you, 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 you made the distance long, as we mentioned last time we spoke. You don't make the distance long. You shorten it by going to the source, to the asl, to the origin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the mistake that people make. They go and they knock on the doors of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not subject those people for you. Why? For, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to go and knock on his door. Rather than knocking on people's doors, go and knock on the door of the one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who can open the door for you, who can ease the stress, and the one who can help you in your need. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not subject other people for you in your problem, or your tribulation, or your fitna, or your illness. He wants you to go back. I'm not talking about taking the means. All of us, we have to seek the means. If it's an illness, you have to take medicine. If it's like ignorance, you have to seek knowledge. If it's, uh, well, money, if you have to go and work. All these are means. But regardless to taking the means, you have to know that by taking the means, you have to rely on the one who provides the means, who is Allah, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say, then, and you do isti'ana, you rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all your affairs, small or big, as we mentioned before. Do not say uh, that, uh, as we said before, because sometimes you think that you don't need to ask for help. Or do you, not, you don't need to, some, sometimes you don't even think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you want to do something simple when you have the means. But uh, that's something we need to, uh, refrain from doing because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make the easy thing great and can make the great small. So this will teach you, teach us all together that all the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are huge and all the difficulties with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are easy if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make them easy. So the the reason for ease and difficulty is the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that's called idn in Arabic. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the permission, everything is easy. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give the permission, everything is difficult. So <coughs> if Allah, uh, this, this is the understanding we have to have. If something goes wrong and uh, you ask people and you want to ask for help, that, that, that's fine. But always understand that you have to ask them, ask those people as means for you to get help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I went through this the last time I spoke, but we need, because it's not clear to a lot of people, because when you have a problem, you go to someone and say, oh, excuse me, can you help me? That help that is coming to you from that person, you should know that the source of that help is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how many people that we know and those who don't know, they have the means to do a lot of things and they are affluent financially and uh, they have surroundings of very important people and they have contacts and they invite people to their homes to eat and they provide fancy food, very expensive and they spend a lot of money and they won't be able to share the food with the people because per perhaps somebody is, is not well. He can only eat limited food. So you find the person inviting people to his household eating from the, the provision that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided and the money that the man spent, he might have a, a, hundreds of pounds spent on a dinner and people are eating, but he cannot join the people to eat because his health is not well. He's not, he's not well or his health does not allow him or he's got a reason for him not to be able to eat what other people are eating in his own household with his own money. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not permit him to eat. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the permission to those people who are coming to eat. So with all the wealth and the, and, and, and the affluence the person has, they cannot share something as basic as food with certain people. And those people who are invited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them the means to eat from what the owner cannot eat. And this is, it, it exemplifies the idea of permission. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can permit you to do something with, with, with little, uh, uh, little uh, tools, whereas somebody with greater tools and greater um, uh, influence cannot reach what you can do as a simple person. I mean, to the point to reach, to eat food or drink, some people cannot drink certain things because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow them to, uh, to do that. So uh, when life gets tight, when your chest gets tight, when things go hard, when things go tough, when you are tribulated and tested, you always have to think that this dunya, this life, for example, the circumstance that we've been going through, the COVID, a lot of things changed since the COVID started. Life's changed for a lot of people. And a lot of people, they felt, they still feel in tight chested for many reasons. I mean, whatever the, the circumstance of the person is going through. But as a Muslim, you have to understand that this life is not limited with the roof that is above you. And it's not limited with so-and-so. And it's not limited with London. And it's not limited with the UK or for that matter, for, for, for the planet Earth. It's not limited by that. Because you have to imagine that above you, there are billions of planets. There is big space. And the angels are going up and down. Spending a journey as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, في يوم كان مقداره ألف سنة مما تعدون In a day that measures 1,000 years from your reckoning. So above us there is a lot of space. And that space is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's, he's the one who's running the affair of that space. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who's running the affair of this universe and the affair of you and I. So all of us, we are a dot in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The earth itself is a small creation in comparison to the universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, vis-a-vis -vis the earth is nothing. It's li literally a grain of sand or even less than that. So when you understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created this vast universe created you, you can instead of you going knocking on doors, and I said again and to, uh, uh, to explain that there is nothing wrong with seeking help from people because help comes as means and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a human being, created the human beings for human beings. So instead of you going knocking on doors of other people, knock on the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you, when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the limitations, all the borders, all the, th the surroundings that are blocking you from getting what you want, be open with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Ibn permission for your problem to be solved, your problem will be solved definitely will be solved. This is a creed that we should all have. If Allah wants to open the doors for you, nobody can close them. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to close the door for you, nobody can open it. And we know from the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu wasallam, when he was talking in the hadith, talking to Mu'ad radiallahu anhu, and he said to him, part of the hadith, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّةَ And know if the whole nation, the ummah, got together, to benefit you with something that Allah didn't want, uh, to, to protect you from something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit you with something. They will never help you except with the, the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And same thing if the whole nation, or, or every mankind, or everybody got together to harm you with something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to harm you with, not, nothing will harm you. But here, always, again, we have to remember, this is seeking the means. We have to seek the means, because seeking the means is from the destiny, from the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, um, uh, we need to have istishar. Istishar is like to have this feeling whenever we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, wa iyyaka nasta'in, when we read Surah Al-Fatiha. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears you in your dua. And we mentioned the last time I spoke, I said with the dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, When my servants ask you about me, I'm near. I, I answer the invocation of the dua of the person who went before me. So we have to have this understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears our dua. And here's it as we say it word for word at that particular moment. And if you cannot visualize that, it's either one or two reasons. Either you are not with the dua, because my, many times we make the dua, but our hearts are not there. And Allah, the Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not hear, uh, does not take, accept dua from a from a heart that is distracted. When you make dua, you have to be present. Present physically, spiritually, and mentally. And you have to recognize, you have to see, you have to know that you're talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the universe, or the creator of the, the heavens and the earth. So either your dua is not uh, done properly, means you're not focused in your dua, or you don't have a conviction that, oh, well, my dua is not going to be answered. And that's worse. And uh, the Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith that you, you'll be responded to one of you as long as they don't hasten. And they, the Prophet وسلم, was asked, how, how, how does the person hasten in the dua? He said, uh, I call, I invoked and I invoked, I make dua and I made dua and it's never been answered. And this istijal means you are hastening like the, the answering of the dua. So we don't 
you don't get the dua answered as you will, but as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. So when you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sami' is all hearing, we should not visualize the hearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similar to our hearing. Our hearing is the hearing of, of, the, cre of, the, of the creature or the created one. But the hearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the hearing of the creator and, uh, and, and uh, the Rabb, the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Laysa ka mithlihi shay. Nothing resembles him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So his attributes are similar to his being subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in terms that when Allah, if he say that Allah is the owner, the Lord of the Alameen, his hearing is, is resembling his, his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala resemble, resemble his being in terms of uh, uh, compassing or encompassing everything. So when you hear, uh, when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above time and space. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ and whoever relies on Allah, whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, definitely will make a way for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Arabic, makhraja means it's not limited and it's not restricted a way that you won't know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide from him from a place that he never expected. So this is our conviction, our creed. What, what our conviction and creed should be like when we talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we read in Surah Al-Fatiha and saying wa So this is the isti'ana, the help and if you trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have trust uh, in his uh, uh, attributes and his names, his beautiful names subhanahu wa ta'ala do not be deluded by the, how people who deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they're moving around. So sometimes it affects you thinking, well, why can't I do what that person is doing? Don't be deluded by that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد. Do not be deluded by what other people seem to have or to be able to do. So we need to build our iman and our creed. And we need to contemplate the state of the Arabs before the coming of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how they were and what they became. The Arabs before the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were a nation that is lost between the Persians and the Romans. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they became something else. And they ruled the, the, the earth in a span of 25 years. And that's nothing in comparison to, uh, in, to in the, that's nothing in the reckoning of civilizations. 25 years is nothing. But how did you do it? With the Quran. And how did you do it? From which part of the Quran is the whole of the Quran? But they used to recite, Wa iya kanasta'in, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Surah Al Fatiha. And because us, we far and we, ignorance to the understanding of Surah Al-Fatiha. We uh, cannot comprehend certain meanings and this is what we're trying inshallah to do to understand because this Surah is not for no reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to repeat it every day 17 times minimally. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revived this nation with the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revived them from death and the Prophet وسلم, taught and brought up and educated these people with the Quran because they ruled with the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadha al Quran yahdi lilati hi aqwam. Verily, this Quran guides to that which is upright. So, this Quran, and when we say the Quran, the Quran is the Salat, and the Quran is Surah Al-Fatiha. And we said that Surah Al-Fatiha is the summary of the Quran. And if Surah Al-Fatiha is the summary of the Quran, it means it has meanings, it has enlightenment. 
this enlightenment, it has enlightenment that we need to understand. So every time when we say, you understand who you're addressing. And when you read Surah Al-Fatiha generally from beginning to end, you should have a clear understanding of what inshallah he's saying. So these people uh, who were nothing before the Quran and became someone and somebody after the Quran, the Sahaba Ridwanullah alayhim, they had conviction in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what they knew from the Quran. Because the knowledge we have from Allah about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. So they were the best people who sought help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the Sahaba recited the Quran and the pious people after them, the Tabi'een and those after them, and the pious people who are following their footsteps, when they say, they understood that they have. Invo they are invoking the creator of the universe, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are invoking him with his, all his names, his beautiful names. They know that all the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be uh, there when they are invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they used to invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding with, with conviction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-mudabbir, the one who runs the affair. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you, who do you need and what do you need? You don't need anyone and you don't need anything. But again, the means, we have to seek the means. But we have to have this conviction that nothing moves and nothing is done and nothing is achieved and nothing is, 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 is withheld and nothing is warded off except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as a summary, when you say this is a key to the beginning for every individual to move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking the straight path. So this straight path is the one I'm going to be talking about for five minutes, I don't have much time, which is the topic of today. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the truth and to make us follow it and to show us falsehood and to help us avoid it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path. I got a few minutes. I'll start inshallah. Is guide us to the straight path. The path of those whom you bestowed your favors upon. Not the path of those who invoke your wrath, nor those who are straight. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, He mentioned to inshallah, I'll start just as, a, as an introduction. Ihdina guide us. So I'm going to talk about guidance. Just a quick introduction and as sirat al-mustaqim so you're asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to guide you and this is a question i mean we are asking allah guide us to the straight path aren't we already on the straight path why are we asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the straight path why we're already on the straight path we're already muslims we believe that we are on on the truth on the haq but why do we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously 17 times, guide us to the straight path? So this is something I want you to think about. So I want you to give you something again to think about. So when you think and when you reflect, when you contemplate this idea of saying, Ihdina, guide us, imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and especially this is for those born as Muslims, Imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destined for you not to be born from parents who are Muslims or not to be born in an environment where Muslims are or Islam is. Imagine that. This is something that the, the Muslim born, the born, born Muslim hardly reflect on that. But somebody who's come from far and has 
who's come from a background that is not Muslim, they understand very clearly what I'm trying to say. Because being born as a Muslim, uh, this is our creed. This is a big ni'mah, and this is a big favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is not thanked uh, for and is not appreciated. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al-fitra fa'abawahu yuhawwidanihi aw yumajjisanihi aw yunassiranihi aw yumajjisanihi Every newborn is born on the fitra, and the fitra of every human being is Islam, is the, the state of purity, is the original nature, is the innocence. So, so the parents either make him a Jew, Christian, or a, a fire worshiper. So all this, what we're trying to get from here, is that the person who becomes a Muslim, and he is not from a background that is Muslim, he travels, he makes a long journey that accounts for 1,400, 1,400 and more years to get to where somebody born as a Muslim, he never ever even thought about that. So, uh, inshallah, I'm going to uh, stop here because I can see the sheikh. Uh, and I'm just going to finish with this uh, sentence and I'll stop. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guides someone from a background that is not Muslim and he comes to the deen, to the haqq, he faces a lot of challenges. Challenges that are related to the culture, to the environment, to the language. So if you reflect on that, you'll understand the mercy that Allah has bestowed upon you by you being born Muslim. But again, this appreciation by the born Muslim is not seen and given its, its, its fair due. Whereas those who made the journey to become Muslim, they understood very well and they understand very well when they stand and they pray and they say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. Inshallah, I'll stop here and uh, to another time, inshallah, bi idnillah. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik shadru la ilaha illa ant. أغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بارك الله فيك شيخ. May Allah bless you for that uh, wonderful uh, lecture you gave us. And uh, we always like to hear your voice when you are here. We have uh, the, the, um, the there are a lot of people coming just to to listen to you and Sheikh Mahmoud as well. So our rating goes up. Especially I'll, 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 I'll correct you there to listen to Sheikh Mahmoud then to me. You and Sheikh Mahmoud, your our ratings go up every Sunday. I don't know because of weekend. I don't know, but for some reason it is because of the weekend, definitely. Yeah. So I, that's what I said. It's when you and Sheikh Mahmoud are here, our ratings go up. Anyway, back a lot I don't think we have more time for questions now. No, no, no questions, inshallah. Yeah. So. Um, because of uh, Makrib comes very early, I think we have to switch say, to Sheikh Mahmoud. Sure, I think he's here now. So, Sheikh Mahmoud, it's all down to you now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi For some reason, I don't know, your, your um, internet is playing up a little bit. I don't know if you can move away slightly from your set or something. It's okay. Um... It's going to be give me a little bit of problem. I forgot my mic today. So <laughs> uh, okay. I don't know if you can hear me. If you cannot hear no, me, no, then no, we can no, go no. to question and answers. And then I'll do my lecture another time. Can no, you no. hear me now? I think we can hear you right now. It sounds better. If you stay that way, everything should be fine. Just for introduction. Yeah, I think your topic today is um, the miracles of Ayatul Kusu, the verses of the throne, part two. Is that correct, Sheikh? You are right on that. You are absolutely okay, right, Sheikh right. Abdurrahman. Just confirmation to First of all, I give salam to Sheikh Abdullah there. And I say to him, Eid Mubarak. Taqabal Allah wa minna sali ala amal. And to the entire students who, are, who have logged in, I give salam to all of them and say Eid Mubarak to all of you. Amen. Um, Even though it's late, but we can say Kullu Amin wa Antum Bikhair. Wa taqabal Allah wa minna sali ala amal. 
وعسى الله عز وجل أن يجعلنا من أهل الجنة إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه Amen. And I'm going to start, inshallah. Uh, I will try to be quick so that we'll be able to cover the remaining part of our uh, ayah that we are covering the last time before we break off. No. If I can get somebody to remind me where did we stop last time, then I will be really, really happy about that before I start. Which line number did we stop on? I know it's one verse we were doing, verse 255. Anybody can remember which line number did we stop on? Was it Mangala the Yashfau in the hole will have beat me? Okay. Okay. Mashallah. Mashallah. I think uh, you are on track. Yeah. Any other person? Okay. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I think it's I am four. Line four. Because yes. it's one I have there. Fi samawati. Well, line four was lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Jazakallah khair. We're going to start from Mandal Levi Yashfa wa inna wa illa bi idhni. That's where we're going to start inshallah. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa la akibatu lil muttaqeen. والصلاة والسلام على من بعث رحمة للعالمين سيد الأولين والآخرين محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد. My dear respected brothers and my dear respected sisters, welcome back to another episode of our tafsir that we usually hold on every Sunday. And last week we are on holiday because of the Eid al-Adha. I ask the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all of our ibadats and may he forgive us all of our mistakes and may he grant all of us Jannatul Firdaus al-Ala. May he also forgive our parents who have passed away, those who are alive, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prolong their lives while their ibadats are accepted. Our Imams, our shuyukh at NBICC who have passed away, ask the Almighty Allah to give them light in their grave. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their hisab yasiran on the day of resurrection. Amen, ya Rabb. Amen, ya Rabb. It is an honor to look at the Quran and study it with you. I will always thank Allah a lot for allowing me to study the Quran with you and ponder the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed and he commanded us for us to reflect upon them and think about what he has revealed and make use of it and use it in our life and improve the way we live in this world so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us paradise which he has kept for the muttaqin. As he has said, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ أَرْضُهَا السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ Hasting to a paradise which its width is the heavens and the earth that little which has been prepared for those people who are God conscious. So the verse that comes, or the line that comes after Lahu Mafi Samawati wa Mafil Art. We said Lahu belongs to him. Specifically, Allah owns Mafi Samawat. Everything that is in the heavens. وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And everything that is in the earth or on the earth. We said, قَالَ He said, مَا وَلَمْ يَقُلْ مَنْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses مَا in this sentence here, part of the verse, Ayat al-Kursi. He uses مَا here to comprise of 
rational things and irrational things. So he's telling you everything, whether it is something that is rational or something that doesn't rations, all belongs to Allah, whether it's in the heavens or is on the earth. All Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns it. He was able to use man, but he didn't use man because man is for rational things. Again, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention lahu first? He didn't mention it at the end. He was able to say, Ma fi samawati wa ma fi ardi lahu. What is in the heaven and what is in the earth is for him. The reason why he did that is because he is making a hasar. Hasar meaning making something specifically belongs to him. And no one can own that. No one can claim that they own what is in the heaven and what is in the earth. Again, he mentioned the ma twice when he said, Lahu ma fi samawat wa ma fi He mentioned the ma twice. Why did he mention it twice? He was able to say, Lahu ma fi samawat wa ard. For him belongs what is in the heaven and the earth. Why did he say what is in the heaven and what is in the earth? Two reasons we said about that. It is the first one. I kayumun bi tadmiri mulkihi wa laysa mulki gairihi. This is telling you that he is ever living to control, to uh, run the affairs of his kingdom, things that belongs to him. So he's telling you these things belongs to him. That is why he is running their affairs. If you are running the affairs of things that doesn't belong to you, sometimes you don't pay attention to it. Yeah. You do as much as you can, but things that belongs to you, and you know the value of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you everything that is in the heavens and the earth belongs to him. So therefore, he is kayyum. He is standing firm and ever living. He never gets tired and he never sleeps. Therefore, he is able to run it perfectly and correctly without any default. It is also an evidence here again is an evidence that is telling you he is the owner. He didn't mention in this particular verse that he is the king. But he's going to mention that in another, uh, he didn't mention this in this sentence because it's the same verse, but he will mention it in another sentence wherein he says, he is a king in the context. You will read that. So if you go to line number five, he said, Man the ladi yeshfao in the who illa bi idnihi. Question. Man the ladi is a question. Who is the one that can? Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talk on behalf of others except with his permission. This question means negative. We did that in Surah uh, Al-Fil when we say, Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al -fil. If you remember, it is a question but meaning negative. So here, as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you and me, there is no one, no one, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how close you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how loved you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no one who will be able to intercede, intercede or talk on behalf of another person, except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted that.
So you can't just go there and say, okay, Allah, can I speak to you about this? Is after he permitted, like what he has done for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we call him, Annahu Shafi, he is an intercessor, someone whom Allah has allowed on the day of judgment, when Allah brings the sun down closer to our head, to a measure of an arm, and people are sweating. And some people, according to their good deeds, some people their sweat will only reach their ankle, some their knees, some up to their uh, chest. Some will even drown in their sweat because of the bad things they've done in this dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will only allow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go to him and prostrate and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge the people. And then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge them. This is telling you, man the levi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idnay. Who is that one that will be able to intercede, intercede or intercess or talk on behalf of the people except with his permission? This is one of the strongest way of putting this across to us. Better than if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, La yashfa'u ahadun indahu illa bi'idhani. No one will be able to talk to Allah on behalf of anyone except with his permission. That statement is lower than saying man dhalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idhani. They are not compared. compared. As if Allah is telling you, a questioning and telling you, use your common faculties, use your brain, and know no one will be able to stand in front of Allah and ask him for something on the day of resurrection, except with his permission. This is also an evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever living. It is, he is ever living. He has no beginning and no ending. It is also an evidence from the beginning of the, the, the eye. When you said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum. This is an evidence also that he is high, he is alive. He is ever living. He is also Qayyum. He is also running the affairs of his creation. Because if no one can enter, enter into a question, a begging or begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept with his permission that shows he is Qayyum, he is the one that is controlling the appears of his creation. No other one. Again, look here, brothers, look at this sentence properly. Man, the, he said, man the levi. You know, the is from the word hada. Man hada levi. So the ha was taken off and the da comes. This is some of the Basirin says, it means who is this that? And who is the one that? Who can dare claim that they are able to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on behalf of another person. Who is there to say that? This is like a rad to the mushriki of Makkah. And all those mushrikeen that are worshiping other idols, believing that those idols can be between them and the creator. So Allah is telling them and telling you and me, don't rely and say, oh, my dad is an imam. My dad was a wali. 
my so-so person, my great-grandfathers were this and that. So they're going to, inshallah, going to go and talk to Allah on our behalf. All those people in Mecca who believe that the idols. Yeah? We are not worshipping these idols except for them to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as if they're saying, we don't believe that they are God, but they can be our intermediary between us and God. The same thing goes to our sister religion, the Christians. They're saying, you just believe in Jesus and everything will be solved for you. And he has died for your sins. And he is going to go, he's the one who is going to go and judge. Waliyadu billah. Are they reading Ayat al Kursi? And my dear brothers and my dear sisters, one of the saddest situations that we are having today in these countries where we find ourselves, and even in Africa, that some people, they call themselves Muslims. When the wind difficulty comes to them, wallahi, they will go to some of the pastors and ask them for them to help them to solve the problem. Their kid is in trouble. Instead of them making dua, they sell their deen, they go to the church. And we have sisters who are calling themselves Muslims, but they're going to the church secretly and seeing some of the pastors and asking them for them to help them solve some of their problems. Let us know that Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, if anyone violates that, anyone goes and associates Allah with a partner, it's finished. Their ibadat will not be accepted until they make serious tawbah, clear tawbah, and they return back to the tawheed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be in. So he said, man, that, so is as hada, who is this, as if he's pointing, who is this one that thinks he can intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without his permission? Who is that one? Those of you who are claiming that Jesus can do that, Jesus can do that, or this person can do that, this person can do that, you are telling lies. The Quran is telling you that. I'm not saying it. The Quran is saying you are telling lies. Give us your, your evidence. Bring your evidence if you are speaking the truth. No evidence. Here the Quran is telling you clear evidence. Bahada Akwa min man fakat. Low this one is much stronger than if Allah only said, Mani ladi yeshfau in dawu illa bi idnihi. Look at this sentence. Those of you have the Quran, Mani Ladi, if you take the there off, let's say he took the there off. He say Mani Ladi instead of saying Man the Ladi. That will be a weaker sentence than this one. This one is so strong as if he's pointing at those evil people, those mullah, mullahs, those uh, alphas who are claiming they can do things. He's pointing at them. He's saying, Who are these? Or who is this one that is claiming he can do something without the permission of Allah? Then he continued. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued. He said, Ya alamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. That is line number six. Line number six, part of the verse 255 the verse of the throne. If you want to memorize this one, if you haven't memorized it, just take these lines. There are nine lines inside that particular verse. You go slowly, wallahi, you will memorize it. And any one of us who fail to memorize Ayat al-Kursi, it means he hasn't put enough effort. Even if you use the transliterated Quran, you should memorize Ayat al-Kursi. It is the best ayah in the Quran. The best ayah in the Quran. 
And I told you that at the beginning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya alamu, ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Look again, he repeated the math twice again there. Ya alamu, ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. He knows what is between their hands. In other words, what is in front of them. What is going to come in the future. Ya alamu ma bayna aydihim. Then he said, Wama khalfahum, and what will what has come before them? He knows everything. La yadanu illa bi kamal al ilm, bi akwal al bashar, wa shafi wa al mashfu minhum. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa taala. Because he knows what you have done in the past, what are you going to do in the future? Because he knows about you everything. Therefore, if somebody is going to talk to Allah on your behalf, for him to allow that individual to talk to you, talk to him about you, is because he knows what you've done in the past and what you're going to do in the future. Based on that, he will allow that individual or he will reject it. So here, he's not saying, I am waiting for information. Let them give me the information, then I will decide whether I will forgive you or not. So it's not like in a court of law that we have in this wall, wherein the judge, is waiting for different information coming from different angles before he decides what sort of sentence he's going to give this criminal. Because he doesn't have all the information. The only ones he knows is the one that are put in front of him. The background of this particular individual from the day he was born and how he was brought up and what sort of difficulty he has gone through Everything he needs someone to help him to get that information. Not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya alamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said after that, my dear brothers and my dear sisters. He said, wala yuhitoona بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ That is line number seven. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ من علمه إلا بما شاء. What does that mean? They are not able to cover, to understand, to encompass anything of his knowledge of Allah's knowledge, anything of his knowledge, except that which he wish, wishes them to know. So the knowledge of Allah, no matter how small that it is, no one is able to know all of it, that small knowledge, except that which he wishes them to know. Could, that is why the Quran told us in another verse, that every knowledge that we have is that which Allah has taught us. The knowledge we have is what Allah taught us. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. Oh Allah, no knowledge is with us except that which, has taught, which you have taught us. 
aisiwahu la ya'lamu shay'an other than him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they know nothing we have in this dunya today people with all the powerful knowledge they've got in this dunya every day they are finding that their knowledge is limited is imperfect is incomplete every single day we are learning that doctors engineers no matter how knowledgeable you are they are certain time will come they know where the knowledge their knowledge stops wala yuhituna they will never encompass be shayin of anything min ilmihi of the knowledge of allah illa bi ma sha except that which he wishes illa ma aradahu allah except that which allah wants bil qadri alladhi yasha about the amount that he wants them to know he will give them that so he is the qayyum as samawati wal ard he is in charge running the affairs of the heavens and the earth that knowledge mahma kana sagiran aw kabiran no matter how huge the knowledge is or small everything is in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let's move to the next one next line my dear brothers and my dear sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wasi'a kursiyuhu as-samawati wal ard wasi'a kursiyuhu as-samawati wal ard what does that mean what is the meaning of that sentence wasi'a kursiyuhu as-samawati wal ard it means his throne has covered the heavens and the earth if you look at in line number 4 wherein allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard in line number 4 this is line number 8 what ya kuti yu samawati wa al-ard is the throne is the authority covers the heavens and the earth the throne here yadullu ala annahu malik he is the king of this dunya and hereafter he is the king of kings that throne has represented his kingdom that is why in line number 4 it was his ownership of the heavens and the earth and in this line he is the king of the heavens and the earth why did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the past tense verb here wasi'a al-madi wa lam yaqul yasa why did he say his throne covers covered the heavens and the earth and he didn't say the his throne will cover the heavens and the earth ليدل على انه وسيعهما فعلا ولا يدل على حصوله فعلا هو يدل على حصوله فعلا the reason is that he is telling you that
السلام عليكم Is that okay? Yeah, can, we can get the video. Carry on, check. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? It's not me. So somebody rang my phone. That's why. Sorry uh, about it. Yeah, that's the reason why it 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 moved from another. Okay. Here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uses the past tense to tell you it has without a beginning. Allah has no beginning. So therefore. When he created his throne, the throne covers the heavens and the earth from that time. So know that, don't doubt it, don't even question it, because he has told me this in the most important ayah in the Quran. That indicate that this is it happened without a shredded of a doubt. The how you cannot question that. How he did it, you cannot question that. But you should have that conviction in you that his throne covers the heavens and the earth. Then. the ending line or the second to the last line wala yauduhu hifdhuhuma wa huwa al-'aliyyu al-'azim is the last one wala yauduhu hifdhuhuma when we think about us human beings whenever we do hard work whenever we do so many activities obviously we're going to get tired we're going to get fatigue so in this ayah allah in this line allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you all the activities i've done that has happened in the previous lines kayyo he's standing and he's running of the affairs of the heavens and the earth and its contents and everything that we know and those that we don't know wala yauduhu hifdhuhuma these heavens and the earth samawat wal ard doesn't make him tired of looking after them doesn't give him any fatigue of looking after them then he concluded wa huwa al aliyyu al azim and he is the most high and the greatest this is an evidence ala kamal al qayyumiyya dalil ala kamal al qayyumiyya is an evidence that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever and forever standing and running the affairs of his creation and he doesn't need any help in that here wala yaudu he uses the la with the present tense verb the dalalati ala al itlaq to show that it has no limit by using the present tense he's telling you no limit to it presently and he's already he's done it since he created the heavens and the earth he created everything and presently he's doing it and in the future he will do it and there's no limit to it that is why he said here la ma al mudari li dalalati ala al itlaq وعلى الوجه الاستمرار والاستقبال and it's so you know that is continuous and it will be in the future that has no ending except the day Allah wanted to end the wall and kill all the things that he has created and finish this particular wall and create us in another life 
also there is still running our affairs forever and ever. And to close this particular uh, ayah, I would like us to reflect on a few points, inshallah, and then I will end the thing there because it looks like our time is running out. Yeah. Let me see the time. It's 24 now. I just have about five minutes, inshallah, so I can end it there because it's half past we're supposed to finish. I don't think I'll take questions today. al khitan the closing points. Bada'atil ayah. This mini, this ayat al kursi begin with two names of Allah. Two names, two attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are those? Take the mubtada, which is Allah. Take that one out. These two are al hay and al qayyum. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begin the ayah with al hay and al qayyum the ever-living and the one who runs the affairs of his creation without getting tired, al qayyum One tahat bi ismaini and he ended the ayah with two names also, two attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are they? Al-Ali, the most high, and are the and the greatest. Two, two, two ayahs at the two attributes at the beginning, two attributes at the end. This is the wonder of this particular verse, how it is well organized. It cannot be except from a creator. If you look at all the sentences, they all emphasize that Allah is ever living and is ever in charge of his creation. All the sentences in Surah, in this particular verse, Ayat al Kursi, they all indicate that. Every sentence also indicates that he is, the, he is the most high. So no one can be compared to him. It also shows he is the greatest. Read all the sentences that we have read. Let's take one example. What's your kursi you samawati wal ard? His throne encompasses or covers the heavens and the earth. That shows he is the most high. It shows he is the greatest. No one can be compared to him. Another note to take from this particular verse. Zakar al ashiaa ithnain ithnain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned things two two. In this verse, if you started reading it, you can see he mentioned things two two. Sifataini fil bidaya, to description of him at the beginning. Wafin nihaya. To description of him at the end, Al Hayyu Al Qayyu, the ever living and the one in charge of his creation. Al Ali is the most high, Al Adim the greatest. Two, two. Karar Allah, he repeated La twice. Twice in the verses, he repeated La twice. He also repeated Ma. Twice. Then, when he reached to Wasya Kursiyo, he repeated Asamawat Walar to Venice. Then he closed this particular verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed the verse after he has told you everything about himself. And he closed it with the most and no one can, can think how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the best words to describe what he has mentioned in the, in, uh, uh, before or previously. And what is it? He closed the verse with Al-Ali. He didn't say Aliyun. Al-Ali, the most high. Al-Azim. 
and the greatest after he has described himself and has mentioned things he has done and he closed it with this can you doubt the revelation of Allah can you sit down and say you know what I don't think this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as some mulhidin are claiming about the Quran is impossible no one with a common sense and a common brain can think like that that is the reason why he did that had he started with the beginning he said Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-aliyyul azim maybe you might doubt but he brought it at the end after he has mentioned the things that he had done. If it was a writer, a normal writer, he would start praising himself at the beginning. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concluded the highest of praises at the end of the verse, not at the beginning. At the beginning, he mentioned the reasons why he has that praise to be the highest and the greatest before he brought those two words. If I reach there, I ask the Almighty Allah to guide all of us to the right path, and I ask the Almighty Allah to accept all of our ibadat and accept the tafsirs that we are doing here, and all the knowledge that we are picking from here, I ask the Almighty Allah to help us to make use of it. Any mistakes that I have done, no is from myself, and everything, anything that is right, no is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته بارك الله في شيخ um very very touching and very good uh, lecture which everyone kept quiet and just attentively listening I'm sure most people must have been taking notes may Allah bless you and and give and give you idaya بارك الله فيك and uh, I think we we Looking forward to next week again. Inshallah. Inshallah. And, uh, you and Sheikh Abdullah is still here with us. But Maghrib is, is fast approaching. We would have liked it to continue. But unfortunately, I think Maghrib is, is just um, around the corner for us. So uh, we can't take question and answer now. So I think I think my we'll homework, my homework check, everybody has to memorize the, the, the verse, inshallah. Next week I will ask people to memorize that verse. Yeah. Inshallah. yeah. Oh, so uh, so what, what is it going to be? Uh, are you going to tell us your, your program for next week or you tell us later? Are you I said my homework to the student is to memorize the Ayatul Kursi for me. Homework, yeah? Okay, so, yeah. so at random next week, you will choose people to read Ayatul Kursi. <laughs> of their brain, of their memory, not from the Quran. Yeah. Inshallah, inshallah. 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 Okay, so uh, I think we'll come to the end now. Uh, yeah, so um, we, we have no question and answer today. So I think that's the end for the program today. And um, I don't know if Sheikh Abdullah, Abdullah would like to give us dua before we go. Inshallah. Tfadal Sheikh Mahmoud. Tfadal Bin. No, no, no. Otiga, and and the man has said has said the best news for news for what Otiga. لا لا الله بارك الله بارك الله فيك ان شاء الله اتمي بجزاك الله خير بارك الله فيك اللهم ربنا اعطنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار اللهم انا نسالك بموجبات رحمتك ان تنفعنا بما تحب وترضى اللهم اجعل الجنه درا لنا ودار كل مؤمن ومؤمنه ودار كل مسلم ومسلم اللهم زدنا علما نافعا كثيرا انك ولي ذلك والقادر عليه بفضل سبحانك رب العزه عما يصفون السلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين